quite lovely on a, uh, a back country road, which I like. Um, I think that there's a lot of live streams tonight going on, so take a shot and see what happens because um, I want to have a, a chat about climate deniers, and it's, it's on my mind. You know, I think about this, and especially with... Uh, Rick Perry's statement that in, uh, that he wants to have a debate on whether climate change is man-made. <laughs> I, I I really think it's an illness these people have, and it is destructive. We know this. Right, we know what's happening. We know that they are they're they're pretty much sick people. We call them deniers, right? Hi, Kim. We call them deniers. But today, when I hear that Rick Perry, who is the the guy that runs our Department of Energy, wants to have a debate, a debate. Who does he want to debate with? Does he want to debate with scientists that are paid off by fossil fuel companies? Does he want to debate fairly? How can you debate about climate science? Now, I know a lot of people are watching other live streams, but I really wanted to be here because it's beautiful where I am and it's always beautiful when I find these really nice places to stop and, and, uh, but, but I, I just, I can't get these things off my mind. And I think climate denying is an illness. It's a sickness. It's a sickness that's born of the greed that has permeated the human race since even before Christ. I was reading about the civilizations before Christ and their undoing. And it's almost like we are parallel to that time. We are paralleling the only the, the, the thing that human beings have done forever. Destroy themselves. Only this time, we have the mechanism to destroy ourselves once and for all. And I am not trying to come on here and be depressing because we have a lot of really nice things to enjoy. Like this. And we still have it. You know? I mean, we still have it. But I'm in a, in a, in a place where it hasn't really come to that, uh, that, that time yet. We have not had horrible terrible weather. I live in western New York. It hasn't touched us yet. But yet I read every day and I listen every day about all the different places in our uh, in our globe that are suffering. You know people in China, they have to wear masks. They can't breathe. And this fucking idiot, Rick Perry, wants to have a debate about climate change. So what do we do about the 40% that don't believe that our climate is changing or don't believe that it is human caused. What do we do? Can we talk to these people? Is there any kind of sense? No matter what scientists have been doing for 30 years, they have been trying for 30 years to talk to these people. And over the 30 years, you know, I'm not a young person, so over these years, I have watched fossil fuel uses, usage proliferate, proliferate, proliferate. Now, today, I was privy to watch a live stream that came from New York in uh, um, uh, Orange County. There is a CPV fracked gas plant. It is a hideous horrible thing that they're building there. And uh, Dennis Kucinich was there. There were a lot of really interesting people, Pr Pr Pramila Malik, and they're talking about how the fact that 
these backroom deals, even in New York, which has banned fracking, you know, okay, New York has banned fracking, that's fabulous, right? But we get all our gas from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, who is now saying that they need to put some kind of surcharge on the gas because they're broke. So all of the bill of goods that Pennsylvania was sold, right? to frack the shit out of the state is all a bunch of lies. And all that money is going into the corporation and the CEOs and the pockets of the wealthy, the one percenters. The one percenters that I'm not even sure if they are climate deniers. I think that they are so, so blinded by greed that it permeates to their soul permeates to their soul and these people were making such an argument against this hideous plant that will then really make New York addicted addicted to fossil fuels for what 40 years do we have 40 years do we have 40 years I read every day about the Arctic I read every day about the ice the melting the glaciers uh, I read every day about animals, marine animals particularly, that are going extinct. This is not to be a depressing conversation. This is a reality conversation. But the, the questions I have are how do we get through to the 40%? And hello everybody. Hello Deborah. Hello Wendy. James. It's, it's really kind of cool that you're all with me because it's driving me crazy. And I don't want to let it drive me crazy. So, because it started a few days ago, and interestingly enough, Wendy, who has just joined us, made me think when she answered to the article about Rick Perry. And then today, of course, that I hear that he's saying that he wants to have a, a debate about climate change, whether it is man-made. It is just like a comedy. It is a tragic comedy, you know. You've never seen it, but I have the comedy and tragedy masks tattooed on my back. And I feel that that tattoo is more relevant now than it was when I got it when I was in my 20s. It, it's just like, it's insane. And Wendy, chime in because you're the one that sort of got me on this, um, this focus here with Rick Perry and the fact that he had said uh, about CO2 and you made the comment that CO2 is not the main thing that is driving climate change, although what is? It is a big part of it. And now today I hear from a scientist that is working in the Arctic that there are things happening underground that are, um, that are actually uh, because of the thinning of the ice and the way that the the land is, I got a car coming, the way that the land is, it is now going to bring up the methane faster, okay? So the methane's going to come up because they're, ex they're experiencing earthquakes in the Arctic lands that are um, happening... <laughs> happening faster now and because the earthquakes are happening that's going to bring up that methane now you know I'm not a scientist and I'm not an expert not at all I'm learning along with you guys I am learning right along with everybody we are on the same page that's what is the beauty of this because we are all doing this together but I don't I don't know how to go about thinking if there's even a possibility that we can get through to these people, especially with this administration. But I do have a little hope, and I will tell you why. I had two gentlemen over my house. They were doing some work in my house. They both were Trump supporters. I started talking to them and telling them all of the things that I do. And we had conversation and it was really good conversation. And, and, and you know what? They actually were listening and they were agreeing. 
and they said that they they felt that something something wasn't right something wasn't right something wasn't right with the health care something wasn't right with how um how this is all going and also uh you know it was like an epiphany when we talked and i showed them some things they were a captive audience because they were at my house doing work but it gave me this hope like geez maybe maybe there is a shot with the reach one teach one <sighs> maybe can we get through to the rick perry ilk of idiot these guys i couldn't look at them and call them idiots because they opened themselves up to listen to me and they actually took my card for environmental coffee house and that was like really cool you know because they both voted for Trump because they were indoctrinated with the um, make America great again and all of that stuff that we have been you know we watched all through the campaign and <sighs> make America great for who I, I don't know anybody that is, except, of course, I don't know any one percenters, and I don't know any mega wealthy people. I don't know anybody like that. Do any of you? Hmm. Yeah, they hated Hillary, Kim says. That's right. They hated Hillary. Let me say hi to everybody. Vincent and Judy and Kim and Jean. This is really great because I, I'm up against some heavy hitters there, but... You know, we have a we have a discussion going. So, and I also want to really give Judy a shout out because she's doing something wonderful with some a new. Well, I don't know how new they are. Excuse me, <laughs> my shirt's falling off. But there is it's it's called Uphill Media, and they are on YouTube and they are amazing. I love them. Okay, I found them. They're in Oregon. They are progressive, and. They're great. And Judy, Judy's one of their, um, what are you doing, Judy, an administrator with them? Well, anyway, yes. And Judy also works um, tirelessly with the group, the Environmental Coffee House group. And she is like, I want to give her a shout out, Judy Rettenbaum. And she's Jupiter Judy. Uphill Media. Yeah, I love them. They've just discovered me. I just discovered them. I am enthralled. I love John, and they're going to have tonight, later on, they're having um, Judy, what's his name? The guy that is running for Paul Ryan's seat. They're not Hillbots. And you know what, Vincent? I have to tell you something. We're really in a bad strait. We can't do the purity test, hon. We do not have time for the purity test. We have to get these fucking assholes out fast. We have 2018. I don't give a crap. As long as they're going to get the climate-denying Republican assholes out, you know what? We have no time. So the purity test is gone. It's out of my vocabulary. That's all I have to say about that. I am not a political commentator. I only do political commentating when it's about 45 and that administration and what they are doing to our environment. You look around. How long are we going to have this? How long? You know? Okay, we got a truck coming and it's it's beautiful, but how long are we going to have this? I don't I don't know. And it's frightening. So the purity test for me is gone. You know? Anyway, <laughs> it's going to get dark, but we we've really got a, a work to do. We don't have time. When I I hear that there are scientists up there working in the Arctic and there is already there are already earthquakes happening because of the ice melt that uh, is getting rid, you know, ready to blow some methane. What do we think is going to happen? So we have to do this fast. But originally, I asked everybody to think about how do we talk about this to that 40%. How do we, how do we engage in conversation the same way I did with these guys? And it was very non-threatening. And it was really cool because I, I didn't put them on the defensive. Not one bit. It was just a conversation. And I was really surprised that they were so receptive. 
And oh good, Judy's putting up Rice, uh, um, Randy Bryce in Wisconsin. Let me tell you, that is an important race. And if, if we can get a guy like him in against Paul Ryan, I feel like maybe we would have a shot. Maybe we could make some changes. Maybe it could start something. 2018 isn't far. And you know what? I don't want to be one of those people that say that we are fucked. You know, I listen to those doomsday channels and I am um, in the near term human extinction groups. You all know that because I'm always into learning everything and whatever. But we, we don't have time. So if we want to change, well, I won't say change because we can't change minds. They have to see it for themselves. But if we want to make a difference, right, with the Rick Perry ilk who wants to debate about climate change, who wants to debate if climate change is actually human caused, uh, about 20, 25 years too late for that debate. But this is our Department of Energy Secretary. And I am not even going to go into Jeff Sessions. I'm not even going there. I, I think I would throw up. <laughs> it's just, uh, they because you know what the EPA is going to happen, what's happening with them. All they're going to do is say, well, all we're doing is the original thing, and that was just protecting the water, which is a bunch of shit. And I do have a story to tell you what happened to me today. And hello, Jeff Pearson. Okay, so I'm gone all day. I call home, talk to my husband. He's like, oh, the farmer across the street who is not an Amish, Amish farmer is, doesn't live there. They, they rent the land, right? He said he was spraying something. I'm like, what? So I said, Doug, did you go over there and ask him what he's spraying? What the fuck are they spraying? Across the street from my house, if they're spraying Roundup, that shit goes in the ground. That goes in my well. What recourse do I have? Now I have a fight on my hands. I have a fight on my hands. Because now I have to find out what they are spraying across the street from me, which is going to sink into the groundwater. And I said, but I could understand my husband. He didn't, he, oh, I don't know. Come on. So now that's going to be my thing tomorrow. I'm going to have to go over there if the guy's there and I'm going to ask him, what are you spraying? And if it's Roundup, I'm going to tell him that either he has to cease and desist the Roundup or I'm going to go to the town or I'm going to do something. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to get legal rep representation. Maybe I'll have to get one of my scientist friends to help me. Maybe I'll have to get um, somebody from my environmental group to help me with this. You know? Yeah. Drinking cancer. I was so pissed. I wanted to go through. Ugh, I won't even tell you. <laughs> I mean, I go through emotions like this every day. I go through anger, happiness. I go through quizzical times. I go through the gamut, especially with everything I read. But then I found Uphill Media too, and I, I go through a lot of fun because I love those guys. Um, but Yes, Judy, I'm going to use my resources. And yeah, we, we need to wake up my dog. My dog is not unawake. He just doesn't want to deal with it. He says I depress him. And I, I you know, I, I, I don't know what to say. I depress him. Because I, I do this. I, I'm working this all the time. <sighs> Jean says no roundup. I just do not know what... Um, you know, what resources I have against the guy across the street that's renting the land that is spraying whatever it is. And let me tell you, if it's Roundup, I'm really going to have a cow. I'm already having a cow and I don't even know what it is. Patrick says I'm fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, Judy says her her hubby the same but starts to wake up. Well, I think my old man is awake a little bit but just doesn't want to deal with it. And and then, like, okay, here's another example of this stuff. My mother. My mother's 82 years old, okay? Awesome. They've traveled the world. They are amazing people. When I told her today that I really would like to take a trip to Greenland 
and Iceland or I, I want to see the Arctic and I want to see the glaciers before they go and my mother's been to Iceland my brother went last year so what does my mother say to me my mother says to me oh my god we have till the next century before that happens how do you argue with an 82 year old woman who watches NS MSNBC every day and loves Rachel Maddow <laughs> I mean, you can't, so I can't upset her. But this is what people think. We have, oh, we can just keep on doing what we're doing. We have till the next century. The Arctic is not melting. Sandy, it's an expensive trip. Well, guess what? How the hell do I know how much longer I have? That's what I want to do. I want to see it. And I already talked to my daughter about it. And my brother already told me to look at... Uh, Airbnbs and all that stuff and you know what I want to get this behind me. It's so pretty Farmland in the house But you know what and I don't have any money But I do have a retirement account, you know, and if I want to take the money out of the retirement account I got to get taxed 10% or whatever the hell 20% but you know what at this time of my life I'm almost like I don't give a shit. I just think I want to do this Why can everybody else do things and I can't I want to Thank you. I you agree with me? Yeah. Well, Roger's joined. Hey, Roger. Roger, our compadre at uh, Environmental Coffee House. He um, he was the one that put up the uh, really good, really good video today. If you all can go to Environmental Coffee House and watch the video of that meeting today that um, Dennis Kucinich was at, and they were talking all about um, the CPV fracking. Uh, fracking gas plant it's just a hideous disgusting thing and you know what really gets me to governor cuomo in new york says oh you know he he believes in climate change and all that but then they do all this shit and back backroom deals and and they and they do it you know they 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 let the they let these fossil fuel companies railroad them into this shit and that's what what is that going to do is that going to get us off fossil fuels Vincent says he's been to Iceland. I should go. It's pretty. Greenland is expensive and complicated to go, but you know what? <laughs> it's the fact that I just want to try. I just want to try. I'm going to see what it entails. And they do things. Well, my, you know, I looked and they said they have tours, but I, you know, a tour is expensive. My brother says I can do it a lot cheaper. So, and then my daughter, who I said I would take, of course, I have to pay for. Um, She's like, well, why don't we go to Alaska? And that's the same thing my mother said. She goes, well, why don't you go to Alaska? I said, I don't want to go to freaking Alaska. I want to see the Arctic. I want to see the glaciers for probably the last time. Anybody's going to be able to see them like they are. And they're, they're melting so fast. So what? I'm going to do it. Mark my word. I always get what I want, even if it breaks me. <laughs> so we're going to go full circle. We're going to go back. Yeah, my mother said the same thing. Vincent says they have glaciers in Alaska, too. My mom said the same thing. But I want to see the Greenland ones. I really do. And since um, I have met Torstein Vidal, and well, not in person, but from Norway, and we've talked a lot, and he has now told me he's my scientist, which is really great, and, you know, runs the Arctic Sea Ice page. Um, I'm fascinated, you know. I'm trying to learn all of the, the measurements and the graphs and all of that stuff. But um, you know if I go on that trip and I have internet coverage, you guys are going to be right along with me. Right along with me. So anyway, let's go full circle because it's going to get dark. And I know that this is, um, this is probably going dark and light and dark and light and dark and light. See, everywhere I stand is dark and light. Go back full circle, Rick Perry and the climate deniers and it's about 40 percent i would say the trump people do you think they all are climate deniers i don't know i don't really want it to be too late you know and you can't like change their minds even with the science hi rochelle hi oh my gosh i really want to go she says, 
Rochelle says they'll be awesome. Any video you get when you're up there, I'm going to try. I swear to God, I'm going to try. I got to call and see if I can retake, take any money out of my retirement, which is really not that great anyway. But you know, <laughs> you only live once. I've always had that motto. I guess that's why I have ridden a Harley Davidson for 32 years and I've done the things I've done. I've traveled, I've traveled all over the country. I've been to Mexico, I've been to Canada, but I have not been anywhere else. I want to do it. Geez, I should ask Rick Perry if he wants to go. <laughs> Our uh, Secretary of Energy. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to talk about. Military buildup in the South China Seas. It's serious. And it's going to be an environmental disaster. And I'm not sure what's going on there. Again, I'm not a political commentator. I am an environmental commentator. I don't... Uh, I feel nervous about this. About the military buildup. And I don't know exactly what's going on there. I know that Trump met with Indian uh, Prime Minister um, Modi, and you know that they didn't talk about climate change. They already made a deal for uh, drones and, and probably talking about, um, you know, what they can do for um, uh, uh, industrializing India more and all that. And that guy is another one that is an authoritarian... Uh, fascist leaning kind of person in that country in India. I mean, we have to keep our eyes open of all this stuff that's going on. So I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover, starting with the climate deniers. How do we change them? And Cindy K has joined. Hi, Cindy. Um, Elvira and Rochelle and great people. I really appreciate every one of you. Covered it all. That's what we have to think about. And if anybody wants to do the research on the South China Sea, please send me information on what you find out at environmentalcoffeehouse.com. I mean, uh, not .com. I don't have a website yet. I mean, environmentalcoffeehouse at Gmail. Okay? Anything that you find in your research about what's going on in the South China Sea. I only have a certain amount of time every day, you know? And we're all very busy. And uh, that's it, basically. So, Judy, you have anything that you want to say before I, I leave about um, your guys at Uphill? Anything? Tonight we should watch, okay? It's going to be uh, pretty soon, so I probably should get my butt home. And uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Reach one, teach one, guys, and send me some stuff, okay? Oh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, I got to get home. Have a great night, you guys. Thank you for coming and listening to me talk and a little bit of a rant, but we got to figure it out. 2018 is coming, and we really have to get rid of these freaking idiots. We have to, and we have to stop applying the purity test and stop fighting. I don't give a crap who it is, as long as they are going to get climate deniers out of office. That's the biggest thing in my heart. So thank you. Erin. Oh, Erin's joining late, but it is getting dark. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you before I go the beautiful skies of western New York. And... I don't see any chemtrails. I don't know if I was seeing a chemtrail. I don't talk about chemtrails. It's quite beautiful though, isn't it? Even even the weeds. Man, I love it out here. Except now I'm really pissed and I have to go home and deal with this fucking shit they might be spraying, excuse my language, across the street from my house. So, again, good night my friends. Peace. Love, thank you for coming. Think about those things that we talked about. You didn't get a notification because you have to actually somehow ask for a notification, Erin. I, I really think it's something you have to do. I don't know. I don't know. But um, thank you, guys. Peace. Tomorrow night, Ken Burns. I think that's his name. Oh, my God. The pipeline guy. The guy that shut up the pipeline, 9 o'clock Eastern. And go to Uphill Media tonight at 10 o'clock.
We got to get rid of Paul Ryan. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Mwah! Peace. Good night.